some of the previous events. So if you're part of a student club and you know you want to share this with your peers, share it with them. So uh, just to start the recording again, Jay Daniel Gomez, career advisor. I'm going to talk about LinkedIn and also your elevator pitch or your intro introduction. So let's jump right in. I'm going to share my screen and I'm going to drop the links as we uh, use some of these resources. So let's just verify. Is everybody looking at the Career Development Center or you're looking at my desktop? Career Development Center, perfect. Um, with these topics in mind, we developed a website inside of our um, main web uh, web page. I'm sorry. We developed a website inside of our website, and we titled it uh, "Build Your Network." And part of networking could be you done through net through LinkedIn, but some really more uh, personable networking could happen at industry expos, career fairs, when you actually talk to the recruiters of the companies. So networking can happen both virtually and in person. But in order to do some of this networking and also applying for jobs, uh, LinkedIn could be a really useful uh, tool for all of you. So we created this really awesome brief videos to walk you through some of the basics of, okay, how do I even create an account? Like, what do I click on their page? Um, how do I start creating these drop-down sections? Uh, how do I present myself? And we have a really lengthy one where I believe four different uh, student profiles get dissected of why was it good, what, what could be done better, and they give us um, uh, you know, permission to, to share that information. So feel free to use this to your advantage to recap some of the things we'll discuss, as well as uh, you know, continue improving your LinkedIn throughout your whole career. So I wanted to show you that. One of the cool features of LinkedIn is that, you, like I mentioned, you can network. And you know, the Laos College of Engineering has a ton of alumni that have a LinkedIn account. So you can find, if you have an interest in a specific company, you can find you know friends that went through your same major at Fresno State and now they're working there. And you can use that as a, as a, as a bridge to make a connection and learn about, hey, what is it like to apply for this company? What are maybe some tips or, or experiences that you went through that maybe could, could help me out? And you can share some of that advice. It could be a really kind of awkward or strange thing to do uh, the first time, but hey, we kept in mind, okay, I, I found someone, but how do I reach out to them? We have uh, different videos that guide you through this, but we came up with a couple of, you know, customizable scripts that you can include when you reach out to someone to make it a little more friendly. Once some folks add you, you know, uh, pitch it to them to see if they're open to have a phone call with you or set up a Zoom call. And here's a, a script that you can literally copy and paste and you know customize it to your needs. And I really like the really cool phrase we, we advise you to utilize, which is, would you be willing to share some wisdom about? And you know, part of this is to introduce yourself and see if they can give you some useful uh, tips. If they agree to have a chat with you, Here's some general questions, or maybe it's a question about their internships that they did and they showcase in their profile. So some of these, you know, little advice that I'm giving you can help you access also what we call the hidden job market, uh, a market of opportunities that leads to jobs that sometimes are not posted anywhere. It's all a referral by, you know, knowing someone into the company. So this could be a really good way to, to utilize LinkedIn for that. But now let's take a step back. I'm going to drop this link in the chat. And I encourage all of you to bookmark it, share it with your friends, and use it to your advantage. So uh, taking a step back, I want to go through some general information on LinkedIn. And this will give you more of a general, um, you know, more of the use traditional slideshow. I'll keep it brief, I promise. I want to be a talking head. But like I mentioned, it's, it's a platform. You create an account. You can network with professionals. And at the same time, you can look for jobs and internships. But even cooler than a regular resume or just another profile, recruiters can use it to find you. And once you set up a really strong profile and you learn how to utilize the different components of it, don't be surprised during your, your entire career that companies may reach out to you. Uh, folks may, may, may make that intentional connection to link you to an opportunity. And I like to call it is, is like your resume that never sleeps. It's always out there and it's, uh, it's a great opportunity to find opportunities. Why should you have one? 
beyond what everything I said, is, is that networking piece as well. You can definitely find other mechanical engineers, other civil engineers in different sectors and, and make some pretty cool connections this way. But how to, how to start it or making sure you got the right uh, foundation to build upon. Number one, we're gonna focus on the basics, such as you need to have a, a LinkedIn uh, profile picture. If you have a picture, it may seem like a simple concept, but if you have a picture, you're more likely to be uh, accepted when you send invitations to connect. You're also very uh, more likely for recruiters to reach out to you. And then image also helps that first impression. Are you someone that can put a professional image on uh, online and someone that, you know, looks like, hey, this person, I want to I wanna have a chat with them. I, I, they, they, they look professional. And I'll show you, if you don't do put that kind of image out there, uh, the impact that it could have in your profile. So let's take a look at the images on the left compared to the images on the right. And right away, you notice a difference on that tire. What are they wearing? This could be the first impression you make with the, with the hiring manager. So it's important to dress up, wear a bun-up shirt, a nice blouse, uh, something that you would wear to an actual interview or if you were to go to a career fair. Uh, backgrounds are important. Make a, a solid color background uh, or use a, a filter right behind you. It's a, something that the focus of the image is on you. Smile. If you wear glasses, we know watch for the glare of, of the flash, but some of these things that sometimes you, you may not think about, you're putting a professional image of you uh, on, on, online. So it makes sure it's, it's something you feel proud of and you can present to an employer. And like, you know, if you look at the right side, you know, distracting backgrounds, selfies, a bad angle, uh, a crop picture of you with someone else, just because you like how you came out, but you know, you want to take the other person out of the image, just take your own, um, profile kind of more of a portrait picture you know nowadays our devices have a pretty cool feature and filters that that, that can help you um you know put up put an image together like that very nicely so hopefully this is a quick self-check and oh my god what do i have on my linkedin as my picture if, if we need to it's really easy to swap that image so that's a little tip and and it has a big impact the way that you're presenting your headline is huge I've seen a lot of students that just have student at California State University of Fresno. And it's important to put your major in there. Uh, include if you're looking in for internships or a full-time job and in which areas, which fields. Because when you send an invitation to connect, the, the person that receives that invitation, they're gonna see three items. Number one, your picture. They're gonna see your name and they're gonna see your headline. So instead of having something like this, just I'm an engineering student at Fresno State, you know, break it down. What are you looking for? Maybe you have some areas that you want to highlight, or if you're part of a national association, you can include that in there as well. So, you know, use this to your advantage to paint a better picture, better story. And here's some of the reasons why uh, it could really help you out. Now that we have uh, some of these three main, main items, I want to show you an additional image that can help your profile stand out, such as your background image. Try to select something that maybe relates to your personality or your career interest, and that way it looks more of a complete profile. So here's a, an example of mine. Here's a professional picture I have of myself. Uh, my phone, my my preferred name, how I like it to be spelled. Um, I have some initials, such as my master's credentials in there. Some of you may pursue EIT, um, like if you're pursuing your, your professional engineer license as a step on the way, if you already earned that, go ahead and include that in there. Uh, and then here's my headline. It tells people what I do and kind of my intentions on LinkedIn are. If I'm looking for a new job, maybe I will put here if I'm looking for a new profession. So uh, folks, folks that know of opportunities, maybe send them my way. So once again, it's important to start in all these basics to have a good foundation on your profile. Now, another important Basic, basic tip that it sometimes gets overlooked is make sure that you claim your unique URL. If you notice, when you click on your profile and you look at the URL on top of your web browser, you may see your name with a few dashes and a lot of letters and numbers after it. Uh, instead of just having all that extra information in there, you can customize it and I'll show you live uh, how to do that in a second. 
customize it and try to keep it shorter to your first and last name if, if available. If not, uh, first and last name, maybe uh, one or two numbers, but then you keep it you know, shorter because you can copy and paste this unique URL and include it in your resume. That way, if an employer wants to look at your profile instead of searching you, if you have a common name and going to try to find you out of you know, 20, you know, 100 people with your name, uh, they can find your unique URL and get, get to see your LinkedIn profile and then get to see more about your experiences. And I'm going to show you some of the cool features LinkedIn has that you can't quite do in a resume and get to know about your, your projects and other things you put in there. So uh, a small thing, but it can make a huge difference in how people, uh, they can find you easier. So out of curiosity, this won't come in the video, but do some of you have a unique URLs in the audience? You can jump in the chat and say, yes, if you feel comfortable, this workshop could be a great way to network with other engineering students. Feel free to drop your URL and that way uh, folks can reach out to you and connect with you. I'm going to show you how to customize your, your URL. Uh, that way, in case you haven't done it, you know, you see how easy it is to do it. Uh, website, can you take it out later? Uh, can you look at it? Oh, yeah, someone asked me if, if they want to, if I can give them feedback on their personal, personalized website. Yeah, I can give you feedback, shoot me an email, I'll include it at the end. But uh, for those of you that haven't customized your URL, you go to your profile and you click on this top section. And that should give you a preview of how the public may see your profile, but also gives you access to this little pencil here. So when you click in there, now you can customize your uh, LinkedIn URL. And if you save and it doesn't let you, it means it's not available, just add one or two numbers next to it. And it should be um, allow you to customize you um, to, to have your, your unique URL. So with that being said, I'm gonna copy and paste it in the chat and feel free to add me. Uh, I don't know if Hernan, you wanna drop your LinkedIn URL so folks add you. And one of the important things of adding Hernan, myself, some of your professors, is that the power of LinkedIn, if you don't want to pay for premium, which you don't have to pay for premium, is the more people you get connected to, the more results you can have, the more visibility your post or your activity can be seen by others. So Hernan and I are connected to a lot of alumni, Hernan probably more than me, specific to engineering. So you definitely want to uh, connect with us to get you know, access to our networks. And if you are not following or you haven't added Hernan on LinkedIn, he posts a lot of jobs related to engineering. So that's a little plug for Hernan and his LinkedIn profile. Coming back to the presentation and some of these uh, practical tips on LinkedIn profiles is we're gonna now dive into, and I see Hernan's URL. So Hernan, uh, I'm gonna go, go after you on this one. Now you know how to customize your unique LinkedIn URL. <laughs> Uh, that way um, you can shorten your those extra digits. I need to shorten it. That's very good. <laughs> <clears throat> so, hey, you're getting something out of this one too. <laughs> now, in the profile itself, let me just quickly uh, bring it up. The first thing that you're going to see in your LinkedIn profile is... Actually, let me show you the actual profile. This is my uh, my uh, my view is the about me, it used to be called the summary section. Hmm. Having some trouble loading the image of the page. Give me one second. Profile, view profile. Here it goes. When folks go to your profile, I'm guessing that was already there. Let's use this view. There we go. This pops up right away. The about me section and or used to be called the summary section. So this is your chance to introduce yourself. And I wanna give you some advice on how to best use it. And this right here links to our next topic of how you introduce yourself to employers in a, at a career uh, event. But the about section, it's, it has a lot of power in, in how you're going to tell your story and you can sell yourself or tell them exactly what you're looking for. So let me show you those tips. So if you, when you look at your profile and see if you're addressing all these potential uh, opportunities to, to bring up your, your experience, your education. So you're not just selling, uh, you're also telling. So 
I like to give advice to students to kind of break up whatever you're going to address in this section into a couple of, of, of sections or parts. So the first paragraph, you can give a quick summary of what, where you are and what you're looking for. Some of you are looking for internships, some of you are looking for full-time jobs. Mention that. Uh, here's a quick example. I'm a junior mechanical engineer student at Fresno State seeking an internship. Go ahead and address that right away. You can put your contact information. A little disclaimer, I would include your email. I would leave your phone number out. Um, that way that's not out in the public, but your email has, could be a good way for folks to reach you. Second paragraph, uh, tell them more about like your your background, like where, where, where are you coming from? Or maybe some of these um, areas of your engineering field that you're passionate about. Uh, maybe talk about what really motivated you to go into this uh, major or this career. Um, I hear I have an aha moment. Maybe talk about why the automotive industry is really something that drives you or, or interests you. If you're in civil engineering, why does uh, structural engineering really, you know, um, motivate you or get you really excited about those type of projects. If you're in computer or electrical engineering, maybe share your first experience and that geared you to pursue uh, this, this degree or those type of careers. So this is now more of your story, right? You're giving some background through that next section. The third paragraph, now you can talk about some of these projects, maybe your proudest project up to this point. Uh, maybe talk about some of the most difficult project you went through and how did you persevere and got it done. So this is where you're highlighting these um, experiences. Maybe you had an internship and you're looking for a job at this point. Talk about that internship and some of the best things you learned or got out of it. And then in the later part of your introduction, talk about if you're part of any student clubs. Talk about maybe uh, some of the times where you've shown leadership or great teamwork and, and, and activities or projects that you had, maybe start drop, dropping some of these skill sets that you, you know are important in your field. And you start addressing some of those keywords, right? Of communication, leadership, being organized. Uh, you could also mention maybe some of these technical skills and that leads to the, the bottom it, um, part of it. Maybe you wanna address and drop some of them here. So how does this look like uh, put together? It could look like something like this. and when you look at someone's about me section, you're probably going to see the first four lines. If someone actually clicks it, um, you know, you, they can see your whole story. But that's why I told you that at the beginning, tell them exactly what you're looking for. So they see that right away. So here we see someone seeking an internships. They prefer to be contacted through LinkedIn messaging, which has a feature. And it has a background of why they pursue this career. And this helps you understand they even put a head in here, a farm girl becomes an engineer. It probably is going to tell you the story of how maybe machinery or uh, working with equipment really motivated her to pursue this, this path. Here we get to see some information about their education. They have a really proud, um, a lot of pride on their GPA performance. They're mentioning some of their internships here. You get to see that. And they're mentioning one of their proudest moments. So here's how all this advice can come to life. Here's another example. Here's a master's in mechanical engineering student, what they're looking for. Um, here's uh, some information about what they have accomplished academically. Here's what they're currently doing in their internship. Some of the things they've been involved on campus. And here's some highlights on their skill sets. So hopefully this gives you more of a solid idea on how, how to utilize this section, which will lead us to how you can use this and it's a good place to uh, to practice right now what you would say to an employer in person. So once again, that's what you can do in the About Me section. LinkedIn also has some really cool features that a resume does not have. Like uh, you can have a resume live in your LinkedIn profile for someone to, to access it. You can also talk about more in detail about some of your experiences here without going over the one page limit, right? You could also upload media into your profile, such as a PowerPoint presentation you did for, for a project, a video, pictures. Um, if there's a link to like a GitHub or some something else that you that where your projects live, you can link them out of here. Uh, so you can do a lot of cool stuff with your LinkedIn. I do see a question. Is it necessary to include your GPA? What if my GPA isn't really ideal? What should I talk about instead? 
So if your GPA is not quite at the 3.0 mark, maybe focus the attention of that about me section of, in your projects. Maybe talk about how you've shown some skills uh, like leadership or attention to detail, and that's where you uh, put the, the attention. Your, your resume and your LinkedIn profiles are platforms for you to sell your, your skill set, sell your education, sell your, your abilities. So focus on the positive and you know, keep the attention on that. So coming back to the experiences, let me show you how my profile looks like as an example. So if you scroll to my experiences, you get to see where I worked. And then some of these, I, let me give you a better view of this. I show you my, my public profile. I don't have anything public, but in my feature section, I have a, an article where I was featured during my, one of my internships. You can include it there. You could also include those type of media or documents um, in the actual experience itself. So you can utilize that for, for that. Uh, I see someone share their profile. Nice. Okay, so coming back to the education, instead of the PowerPoint, I'll show you this. It's really important that when you put your education, you get this red uh, logo of Fresno State. That way you get linked or connected to the university's account. And, and that comes in really uh, handy. And hey, someone was a teaching fellow. Hey, shout out teaching fellows. Uh, in your education, I just wanna show you this in the live uh, editing mode. You could also include if you were part of different student organizations uh, or some of the, I see people drop their coursework here. You can also do that or some projects you've done. You can also include media in this section. So that's uh, something really neat. Other cool sections to make sure you include. If you do, I think Udemy, it's, it's a, a popular uh, tool with engineering students. Uh, LinkedIn Learning, if you do any additional learning on your own and you get some type of certificates or you get a, a, an industry certification, you can mention that and showcase it in the li uh, licenses and certification section. So let me show you where that lives. You go to add a section, you go into accomplishments, and you can use this to add a whole bunch of cool stuff. You can add projects, coursework, honors and awards. If you're part of specific organizations for any master students out there, once you, you know, finish your research pro uh, project, if it gets uh, published or you're part of research with professors, include that in there, include the link to the research, um, you know, article that, that got posted. So that's under accomplishments. I believe if you go into background, okay. If you go into background, that's where the licenses and certifications can be accessed. Your volunteer experience could also live here. And I believe under skills, actually right under um, back to accomplishments, sometimes students forget to add if you're bilingual. If you know a second language or a third language, go ahead and add that because that could also be showcased in your profile. So here's how these profiles, um, different sections can look like. Here's my certifications, volunteer experience, uh, and my, my activities in different student uh, groups. On the skills section, this is something that recruiters actually use to find you. So make sure you list technical skills as well as soft skills into this section, and you can endorse each other. So you get to see that some folks have endorsed my my uh, experience working with college students and here you get to see who they are. Some of your skills can be endorsed by peers that could also be endorsed by professors or you know folks that that work with you in group projects. You could also if you put a skill and you worked on a project with someone you can link them to that skill and that way it shows that you know you work in a project with them. You can get recommendations from your supervisors from professors and they can write about about you here. So if, if I was to look up, I'm gonna pull, pull Hernan real quick. If I find Hernan and I work with them on a few projects and I'd like to ask for a recommendation from him, here's how you do it. You go to more and I can request a recommendation from him if we work on something together and I can shoot him also a message, say hey, Hernan, can you please help me with the recommendation? And I, I could also give Hernan a recommendation and I can recommend them from something. So this could be utilized to your advantage. 
So coming back to the, the bottom of your profile, you can also follow. Here's my, my languages. Here's different organizations I'm a part of. You can look up companies that you want to work for. And this is something really important that I don't think gets enough attention on LinkedIn. If you like specific companies and they are on LinkedIn, go ahead and look them up and follow them because this is going to get connected to your interest section. So you can follow specific uh, you know, individuals. You can follow specific companies. By following these companies or groups, maybe there's a group of civil engineers that you, you, you want to join or other, other group of professional architects, the more you follow these organizations, number one, lets the employer know that you keep up with what's happening with the company. So if I pull up Cargill, I can click here following. And when I go to my feed of information that for folks that I follow, what they post, Cargill should be on my list of information and I can keep up with accomplishments the company has, new projects, uh, new breakthroughs, uh, cool news about the company. And if a recruiter reaches out to me, they know that I'm you know, trying to keep up with, with what the company is, is, is doing and how it's doing and you know, cool things that are happening there. So that's something important to, to keep in mind. And that's more on the profile itself. We can definitely invest a lot of time on things beyond the profile. So if you want to know more about these cool features that LinkedIn has to offer, you know, I, I do offer walk-in, um, you know, support Fridays, one to four uh, in Hernan's uh, office space, uh, East Engineering 336, Hernan, correct me if I'm wrong. But- uh, 356. 356, 356. And- Without an appointment, you can come in or you can shoot me an email and we can focus more of a one-on-one uh, space on your profile and using LinkedIn. I will finish up the LinkedIn information with this. I encourage all of you to go to uh, the university's page because this can help you uh, build up your, your skill section. When you go into the university's page, I myself and I know a lot of individuals at Fresno State were encouraging students to create these profiles. Number one, you know, we I hope I'm part of the movement to get our alumni to reach the 100,000 mark. So we're almost there. But you, when you click on alumni, you can narrow down the alumni based on maybe folks that work for specific companies that you want to uh, look into or if they study the same thing as you. So in the chat, can someone drop uh, your major? If it's mechanical, if it's civil. Okay, let's do mechanical. So what I'd like to do, mechanical engineering. So this is just a keyword search, but what, what that just did, it narrowed down the result. It shows me with some of, some of the folks with these words in their profile live, some of the companies that have hired them and who has hired them the most. It looks like PGE is popular for ME. It also tells me what kind of sector they work in and their actual major here. So just because they have mechanical engineering may not mean that they study that. So I click studied and now have a more filter search. And here's where things start getting really interesting. When you hit next again, here are skill sets that mechanical engineer professionals have in their profiles. You may recognize some of them from your class classes or projects, but if you look at your profile and you don't have some of these in there and you, you can you know provide evidence that you have these skill sets, this may be something you wanna to add to your skills section. Because if 600 and something or 500 folks are putting these keywords or skills in their profile, I think that's indicating something that that's a popular thing or that's maybe how they're being found by recruiters. So take a look at these uh, for your engineering um, field and see what alumni are putting. Uh, you could also find just mechanical engineers and people and see how they're building their profiles and see how, what they're putting on their skill sets. So you can utilize and look at other people's profiles to get inspiration and, and customize and strengthen your profile. So. There's a lot of cool stuff. There's a whole world on the job searching features that this offers and the insight you can get out of it. But you know that's, that's conversation for another day. So with that being said, are there any questions on LinkedIn and 
building your profile, some of the cool features that you can have access to or how to, how to input information. Feel free to type it or if you want to unmute yourself, this is a perfect time to ask. Well, if, if someone has a question, you know, feel free to uh, put it in there. I'm gonna switch uh, gears and talk about, uh, and actually give you a break of my voice, show you a quick video. So I might have to reshare my screen one second to optimize it for sound. And let's try this again. So it may have disappeared from the screen, but I wanna make sure audio comes through. And Hernan, let me know if you can hear the sound. Is sound coming through, Hernan? Yes. Perfect. So this is a video on introduction, introducing yourself to elevator, elevator pitch. Sometimes when people say that, you're like, I don't really understand what that means. But this is how you provide a brief commercial who you are. So we actually put a, an avatar in an elevator to illustrate it for you. So we can't see the video now. There's no video showing? Mm -mm. Let me no. try this again. Uh, optimize for video clip. Is the screen sharing? It's sharing, but it's showing us your desktop. Okay, let's try this again. How about now? There we go. Now we can see it. Okay, let's test for sound. The sound coming through? No. Okay, let's try this one more time. Third time is a charm right here. Screen one. And can you see the YouTube? Yeah, chat? we can see. Yeah, we can see the, the screen. There we go. Okay. Sounds good. A 30-second elevator pitch, sometimes called your 30-second commercial, is a quick way to introduce yourself at a career fair, when networking, or in any professional setting. Start off with a quick intro, your name, year in school, and major. Easy, right? Next, mention your plans for the future. What field are you interested in? Let the other person know your goals. Then, talk about the steps you've taken to get there. Briefly describe your experience or skills that you've developed to help you reach your career goal. Finally, if you're talking to an employer, mention how their company fits into your career plan. And there you have it, a 30 second elevator pitch. Create one and you'll be able to approach employers with confidence. So, what's your pitch? All right, so hopefully they gave you a break from my voice and some images <laughs> to when people tell you the elevator pitch, like what does it really mean? And I, you know, every Friday I go to Hernan's um, uh, office space and I do get on the elevator and sometimes there are students that go up you know, the elevator with me. So that could be a perfect place to introduce yourself to others. If there's a professor or Hernan or myself on the elevator, practice it with us because that gives you a real experience of how, you know, time could really slip through your fingers and you can maximize, you never know who you're, who's in the room, I tell students. So uh, what I wanna do for the remaining time of, of our workshop today is I am gonna put up a, a handout to help you kind of break down this, this concept of you know, introducing yourself. What do you say? Uh, how do you say it? And I will ask for some volunteers if we have a brave, so in the in the workshop to give this a, a try so actually let me share this again let me take out the video and sound are you guys uh hernan is the like, we're which, seeing your desktop again yeah. we, we saw the document before when you had Let's shared it try this again how about now yeah there we go okay so many options okay so here's a quick skeleton view of you know, basics is, of course, your name. If you have a preference on, on first name versus middle name, yeah, this is a perfect way to say that. Or if you want to make sure that 
your name is um, uh, enunciated correctly, you know, take the time to stay and articulate it. So my full name is Jose Daniel Gomez Martinez, but I prefer a shorter version of J. Daniel Gomez as far as my name ran out, but I go by Daniel, so tell people, my name is J. Daniel Gomez. I'm a career advisor at the Career Development Center, and but you can call me Daniel. Here's a quick way, you know, what I, what I, what I, what I do, where, where I work, and my name. In your case would be your name. Uh, level in school means that you're a freshman, sophomore, junior, grad student, right? And what is your field of study? What are you majoring in? So pretty basic. So well, let's start here. Do I have any volunteers that want to just introduce themselves on those three areas? This is good practice for tomorrow. Come on, don't be shy. I can volunteer. All right, awesome, it. awesome. That's the first three you said, right? Yeah, first three. Okay, that's not bad. So, um, okay. Hi, my name is Alonzo Martinez, but um, you can call me Eli. I'm a senior uh, civil engineering major at Fresno State right now. Perfect. Uh -huh. So now, now we know you prefer to be called Eli. Perfect, man. So you, that, that's how you started. Good start. I have a, I have a question. Is the, sure. the nickname like really professional? Should I just like say Alonzo or does it matter? It's, it's your name, man. It's your preference. Okay. Um, it, tomorrow would be a great opportunity to, so you can, you know, test it out or talk to the first company and see how, how it feels for you. If you, you know, have that preference of Eli, let them know. Um, if you don't mind and you don't mind them calling you by your first full name, uh, then, you know, it's something that you, you choose. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Because you notice what's going to happen after you introduce yourself, you're going to have a dialogue with them. So then they're going to say, oh, Eli, tell us more about this project. Or, you know, that way you make that personable touch too. So the rest of your of your elevator pitch or your 30 second commercial, folks call it different name, different things, is give them a sense of pat, present, kind of where, where you are, where you're looking for, or what's happening. Um, and this could include if you're the first one in your family, uh, if you're part of student clubs, uh, some of the strengths or skills that, that you feel pretty confident in, uh, if you're looking for an internship, uh, or right? And then the past, here you can talk, bring up different different things that you feel that, that can that connect to the recruiter of the company. The customizing of this really depends on the event. So for next, next, um, next event coming up for you tomorrow, like Hernan said, take a look at the companies see their projects, see kind of what, what they do, and maybe you're going to emphasize certain projects or, or skills or experiences for a company versus another company. And that's what's really going to help you stand out when you, when you introduce yourself to them. So you can start with the present, then talk maybe talk about some of these skills or projects next, and maybe connect it to what they do. So I'm looking for an internship on this and I'm aware that you guys have these type of projects or you utilize these type of technology. So I'm really excited to, to talk to you today. And I wanna learn more about what, how does your internship uh, work? What does it look like? What are some of the projects you guys have for the interns? Or maybe it's a full-time job and same thing. I'm curious about the entry-level positions your company offers and then what does that look like? So you can, customize this to your needs, but I will be emailing this at the end of the workshop to the participants and sharing it with Hernan as well. But this can help you kind of write this out and, and practice saying it. And here's some examples towards the back. So we'll just go through these together and I will may ask a, a volunteer to, to kind of share, share how you would approach this. But here's an example. Hi, my name is Sam Alvarez. I am a senior, senior civil engineer major. I'm graduating this semester. I'm looking for a position that would allow me to use my decision-making, problem-solving, and organizational skills. Over the past year, I've been strengthening these skills through my internship with Blair Church and Flynn Consulting Engineers. I've also been a member of an, an officer of the Society of Hispanic Professional Engineers, where I have developed leadership skills. Future, um, I read that your organization works with, you know, Future 500 municipalities, public agencies. Can you tell me more about? how my experience may fit into your organization. So present, past, future. There's the technique right there. The second one, I won't read it to you, but take a look at it. All 
right. Maybe this part could be a follow up once you uh, have that dialogue with them. It's not just, hi, you choose yourself and that's it, right? That's going to spark a conversation with you and them. If they mention some of the things they do, maybe you, that's an, your response could be, hey, you know what? I actually use that, that software or I use that, uh, that, that concept in a project I did and I did this because they're trying to get to know you and you're trying to get to know them as well. So here, that's a pretty cool example of highlighting a project versus like an internship or experience. Here's the third one. So I'll go ahead and take a look at that one. So as you see, introducing themselves, their name, their major, what they're looking for, maybe uh, uh, an experience or classes or skills or projects, and then you're 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 kind of you know pitching it back to them to then tell you about their opportunities that they're to talk and showcase their companies and the, the positions they have available. So um, Hernan already helped you by giving you a list. You can go through it and be more strategic on which tables you visit. And you can use that to your advantage, but you got to be prepared and show up and be ready to do to do this kind of uh, introduction, right? To get the conversation going. I can add, companies will be so impressed if you know, if you can tell them a little bit about some of their projects, some of the projects that you, you've seen, uh, it'll just blow them out of the water. I know that uh, many uh, company representatives have been so impressed with students that you know, have some knowledge about the company and uh, have some, you know, background and have, have looked up projects because that, that means that you've taken time, you know, that you're really interested in, in their company and that, uh, you know, you've invested some time in finding more information about who they are. That's very impressive to them. And so I, I definitely recommend all of you to um, take a look at, at, at the list of companies and do some short research on each, you know, five to 10 of them, write down some facts so that you have some of those to share with the companies tomorrow. Okay. As you approach them as you network. Yeah. And as you introduce yourself, it's a great way to impress them. Hernan, can I have maybe one name of the company? Can I show them, uh, uh, some tips on how to research them? Actually, Blair Church and Flynn is one of the companies that's going to be here. Um, which is in one of the one of those. Um, let me give you another one. Uh, Pacific Gas and Electric is going to be here. pg and &E is going to be here. Um, you know, I'll, I'll, use, well. I'll use this one as, a, as an example. Okay. Mm -hmm. So something you guys are gonna realize if you literally copy and paste the name of the company that Hernan emailed you uh, into, into LinkedIn, a lot of them will have a profile and you can get a you know sense if they have specific jobs and their about section. You can learn more about the company, how the size of the company, some of their specialties. Another cool thing is they, you know, should have their website. Uh, but, you know, these are just basic things you can look into their feed. This is a great way to kind of get insight about what's happening currently with the, with the company. If they have, you know, they're highlighting a pretty cool project they're leading or a recent award or, you know, some pretty, pretty like unique things that they're taking pride of. So here's a, here's a project that maybe you can now bring up when you talk to them. When you go to their websites, uh, let's see, market services, get into what are they you know, specialize in as far as their services or products. And then they're probably gonna have examples of you know, regional areas where they have their footprint. I think their homepage has a projects like that I just overlooked yeah successful projects and yeah make a quick note and when you go talk to these companies it's not like you have to memorize all this take a, a notebook take a portfolio and have some you know bullet points that you want to address with them and here uh well they really break down all their set categories of of uh of markets and projects so hopefully this gives you like an actual like, okay, they say research companies, but how do you do that? Like, what do you look for? That's, this is a, a perfect way to, to approach it that way. Uh, so coming back to the elevator pitch, just to 
kind of take this uh, workshop towards the end. Do I have any volunteers that may want to uh, give this a shot? And this would be a great place. Um, I'm not sure if at this point, Hernan, we can maybe conclude the recording if any student maybe has a hesitation about that being part of the video. Absolutely, but absolutely. Because not, I, can, I can absolutely stop recording, okay? That's going to motivate you to, to <laughs> volunteer and, and practice your, uh, your elevator pitch. But no, yeah, let's, I'll stop recording. All right, so.